Welcome to Hey It's Carly Rae's Book Club. This is book hour where authors will talk their latest novels, reveal their writing process, and play some fun book games. I'm your host, Carly Rae. Today, we have author Kristen Baer. We're going to be talking about her new novel, Agatha Arch is Afraid of Everything, finding out what inspired her to bring this witty and fun character, Agatha Arch, to life, if writing was always her passion, and see if she would ever move to Mars. <laughs> Tell us where you're joining us from. Hi, Carly Ray. I am north of Boston in Andover, Massachusetts. And your new novel, Agatha Arch is Afraid of Everything, comes out today, November 10th. And here's a close-up look at the cover. It already has gotten rave reviews. Jessica Strasser, best-selling author of Not That I Could Tell, said from the very first page, Agatha Arch's voice is a breath of fresh air, fears, and all. A highly satisfying read, sure to be one of my favorites of the year. While Laura Zingman, author of Separation Anxiety and Animal Husbandry, said a fun, funny, and fresh story of resilience to the many betrayals of marriage and middle age. Tell us more about Agatha Archer, <laughs> everything, and what those who haven't read the novel can expect. Well, Agatha Arch is a handful. Um, she's a woman who, until the moment the novel begins, has held her many, many fears at bay through a variety of means. In the very first chapter, there's an inciting incident. I'm not going to give it away. And her entire life is turned upside down. Nothing is as it was before. And her fears are unleashed upon the world. Now, the voice and tone of this book is very catching because it's witty and full of heart. What inspired you to write Agatha Arch is Afraid of Everything? Well, I moved back from Shanghai, China in 2011. And I was a mom at that point. I was not a mom when I moved to China. Came back, got settled in, and realized that there are these things called mom groups, Facebook mom groups, online mom groups, and I got involved in a few. And very, very quickly, I was fascinated. They're a social construct that um, is unique to our time. And Agatha Arch just started to grow out of that. And I thought, there's a, there's a story here. There's a novel. Without giving away anything to those who haven't gotten a copy of this book yet, tell us what your favorite scene was to write. The opening scene. The scene where the thing I'm not going to tell you happens. I wrote that, I wrote that scene probably... 40 times, just tightening and tightening and tightening, making every word count. Um, that was my favorite. And then any scene where Agatha is wearing her spy pants is my other favorite thing. Everybody will have to check that out. And you will have to write Kristen <laughs> what you think of the first chapter. Indeed. Now, when you were writing Agatha Arch is Afraid of Everything, what did you want readers to get out of it? Was the character of Agatha Arch everything and more you imagined her being? She was, she was, she was more, she's always more. Um, I wanted people to really see her arc. Um, fear is something we're all experiencing a great deal of right now. And I think even beyond 2020, fear is one of the things that occupies people. Um, and empathy, I think, is the thing that we need most in the world. And so this story puts those two pieces together in hopefully a unique and funny way. Yeah. Well, I know I'm really excited for everybody to get their copy of this novel. And you heard Kristen talk about her newest novel, Agatha Arch is Afraid of Everything. When we return, we are gonna find out how Kristen crafts her amazing novels. 
Thank you for choosing Three Brothers Wineries. I'm Erica Palacelli. I'm one of the partners here at the winery, and I want to tell you a little bit more about our estate. We were founded in 2006 by Dave and Luann Mansfield. We have 40 acres of grapevines, a fully operational farm. All of the wines you're tasting today are from our farm. We have two female winemakers, Kim Marconi and Paige Vinson. On our campus, we actually have three wineries and a microbrewery. We have an extensive portfolio of not only wine, but also beer, hard cider, wine spritzers, and wine slushy, all manufactured here on site. When we opened our doors in 2007, we had a modest staff of 10. We've grown to employ 40 full-time and 100 part-time employees. We pride ourselves on creativity, innovation, and our company culture. When you make a purchase from Three Brothers Wineries or Warhorse Brewing, you're supporting a majority women-owned small business, and we thank you for that. Welcome back to Book Hour. I'm your host, Carly Ray, here with Kristen Baer. Now, Kristen, take us on your normal writing day. Do you prefer writing in the mornings or at night? Do you get your ideas from stories in a dream? How do you craft your writing? Well, I get up every day at 3.30 in the morning. Um, I have two kiddos who, who wake up early, so I need that absolute quiet, nobody's awake time. I get up at 3.30, I have coffee made by 3.45, and I'm in my chair by 4. Uh, usually, I get about two hours right now. Uh, I long for more, and I look forward to that day, but right now, that's all I've got. Um, I've gotten ideas everywhere. Uh, my last novel, The Art of Floating, an idea came from the New York Times in an article in there. Um, experiences, I do dream a lot uh, and solve some problems in the writing in my dreams. Now, in an interview you did in 2009 with Compulsive Readers, you said, if the writing thing doesn't pan out, I'm sending my resume into Cirque du Soleil. Did you imagine <laughs> back then that you'd have now three published novels? <laughs> Thank goodness, because Cirque du Soleil would not want me. <laughs> I, you know, it's a real gift to be publishing a third novel. Um, you know, you just, you don't know. This business is tough and especially now. And I'm, I'm really grateful to readers and to Alcove Press and my agent and everyone else involved in the process. So it's pretty amazing. Now I'm curious to know if you always wanted to be a writer. You seem so fearless moving to China in 2006 and adapting to an entirely new lifestyle style, hardly knowing Mandarin while also promoting your novels. How did you juggle it all? Was there ever a time you didn't want to write? There was never a time I didn't want to write. I started writing when I was seven. Um, I wrote my first poem, The Hummingbird, in my bedroom. Um, I had never seen a hummingbird at that point, but I, I still have that poem. Um, and I've written ever since. I have an undergrad. I have a graduate degree. I teach. And stories just the way that I experience the world. Um, I can't imagine not doing it or not being driven to do it. Now, your new novel, Agatha Arch is Afraid of Everything, is very different compared to The Art of Floating and Thirsty. Is that how you like to write, tackling different topics in every book you publish? That's an interesting question. Um, if you look at those three novels, each takes place in a different town, a different state, uh, very different characters, historical times. But the one thing that they have in common is that they all three orbit around things that are lost and things that are found. And throughout the years, I've discovered that almost everything I write, even essays, they, they orbit around that theme in some way. So there's, there's a connective tissue, even though I love to go and explore voice and place a great deal. Yeah, you like having a common ground in your novels. I do. Well, you guys heard Kristen. We'll be right back after this short break to play Game Time with Kristen. Mmm, coffee. The liquid that helps us start our day or keeps us going at 2 p.m. when our keyboard pillow nap comes calling. Okay. Good. Good. If 
fire department coffee, we know how important it is to you that your coffee tastes great. So let's face it, when you're choking down eight to ten cups of bean juice a day running back-to-back calls, or just trying to keep your wits together while your well-behaved children tug at every last strand of your sanity. We want to make sure that every last drop in your mug is the best coffee you've ever tasted. Who are you talking to? That's why at Fire Department Coffee, every stage of your order is watched after by carefully trained professional eyes like our head roaster, retired fire captain, Dave McWhit. <laughs> Dave! From our R&D department that's always striving to make sure that your next cup of Fire Department Coffee is the perfect balance of wonderful taste and the caffeinated motivation that you need to get through your day. There has got to be a better way of testing this. Probably making sure that you get your orders delivered to you as quickly and affordably as possible. Hey Doris, you know you're the only lady I hand deliver to. Oh, thank you Jason. I was wondering if you could help me. I think my cat is stuck in the attic again. Are you sure he's up here Doris? It's really hot and I can't see anything. Oh, I'm sure he's still up there. Uh, why don't you take off your shirt? You wouldn't want to overheat. <laughs> Not falling again for that Doris. And at the end of the day, we're just thankful that we get to follow our passion of making high quality coffee for thousands of hardworking people all across the world. So thank you for your support, and we look forward to making each and every one of your days better, one cup of coffee at a time. Cut. Woo! Good job, guys. Very, very nice. Smooth. A lady named Doris just ordered a couple bags of coffee and asked for it to be delivered by her steamy ginger firefighter. Oh, that lady is relentless. Welcome back to Book Hour. It is game time with Kristen. Today we are going to play Guess the Characters. Kristen, I'm going to give you hints about literature's most popular characters, and we'll see if you guess the characters correctly. I'll do my best. Okay. Now, the first character is a female protagonist from a novel published in 1813. She's referred to as Lizzie by those close to her. She's the second oldest and only has sisters. She ends up marrying someone she despises at the beginning of the book. What character is this? It's Pride and Prejudice. And it's Lizzie Bennet. Yes. <laughs> this character is a male and a title character. The story was published in 1925. He's a millionaire and owner of a mansion that is so luxurious it's hard to believe it's real. He ends up getting killed in the novel and his love interest is Daisy. Which character is this? Jay Gatsby and the Great Gatsby. Yes! Ooh, to zero. <laughs> <laughs> this is another female protagonist who is the center of a young adult book series. She's fearless and has a younger sister she is very protective over. Her name comes from the plant Sagittaria and she is most famous for archery. Her character also went on to be portrayed on the big screen. Which character is this? Oh, there, there's more than one movie, too. I know. It's on the tip of my tongue. You've stumped me. Katniss Everdeen from The Hunger Games. That's it. <laughs> Two, one. We'll see if you can win it on this one. I'm this ready. Character, <laughs> this character is a famous redhead with braids. She was introduced in 1909, and her love interest is Gilbert. She went on to become a teacher. Which character is this? Braids. And her favorite color, you think, is like green. Or she, green's like in the book. She turns her hair green. Not Anne of Green Gables. <laughs> yes, Anne Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> so you do know literature's uh, characters. I passed. <laughs> All right, the next game we are going to play is Would You Ever? Oh, so yeah. the first question is, would you ever have a picnic on top of the Empire State Building? Yes. Would you ever swim across Lake Erie? Yes. As long as you have warm clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> would you ever move back to China? In a heartbeat. Would you ever move to Mars? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> I would love to go to Mars. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Uh, would you ever drink snake wine? 
sure, why not? <laughs> Give it a try. <laughs> try anything once. Well, that concludes game time with Kristen. Now, Kristen, I just want to thank you for being on book hour and being here with us. Before I let you go, tell viewers what's next for Agatha Arch is afraid of everything. Are you going to attempt a book tour? Well, it will be virtual, but yes, we have a series of events lined up starting tonight, November 10th, yeah. um, with the Penguin Bookshop in Swickley, Pennsylvania. Uh, and all the events are listed on my website. And we will put the links to everything of Kristen's in the description below so you guys can go and check that out as well. Now, before we leave you, Kristen, also tell viewers where they can find you on social media. Ah, I am at KBear O'Keefe on Twitter and Instagram. You can find my author profile on Facebook and I'm on Goodreads. I'm everywhere. You heard Kristen. Go and check her out on your social media. Again, all the links of where to find her are below. Thank you, Kristen, for being on Book Hour. And for those watching, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for having me. Bye.